Welcome back to Parenting to Impress, your go-to podcast to learn practical ways to love God and love others, and impress this on the hearts of your children. I am your host, Heidi Franz, and I am joined by my dear friend, Melanie Simpson, two moms who have made a lot of mistakes, but found grace and truth along the way. Today, we are going to talk about family vacations. Yay! Yes. No. Yay, yay. No? No, yes. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of emotions come up on yes. this topic. Yes. A lot of emotions. And we know that several of you are either making plans for family vacations. And so what we want to share today are just some tips that we have learned in our 20 some years of family vacations that we have taken. And mm-hmm. um, you're going to hear about some what would be considered small vacations. You're going to be hearing about some that are large vacations, but we hope that we can just give some tips along the way. And and I would ask you this, Melanie, why, why do we as mom need tips on family vacations? Because it's out of the norm. And we have expectations about what those non-normal situations are going to look like. We've looked at our Instagram accounts, our Facebook accounts, and Mm -hmm. all of our friends have posted their highlights, the highlight reel of their Mm -hmm. vacations. And we're like, I want that too. And what you didn't see was the tantrum that happened two seconds before the picture was snapped or the argument that they had, you know, in the car on the way there. So we're going to get real with you. Yes, we are going to, as we always do, we're going to share the good, the bad, and the ugly. So I would say buckle up maybe. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So I'm going to start with my first piece of advice, and that is start small. Mm, Yeah. We started out by going on a staycation. My husband won some free um, hotel stays, and so we went literally five miles from our house and spent the night, played in the pool, ordered pizza. And that was our first vacation. And I'm sure that was such a blast for the kids because it was, it was something Mm -hmm. different. But I also know you came away from that experience with some things that you're already like, okay, so learning experience, check. And it was a safe place to learn. Yeah. It's like being in our house. It's a safe place to fail. So five miles from your house was a safe place to fail. Exactly. And we learned a lot of things. For one thing, we realized what it was like to have one bathroom. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, we, we are blessed to have more than one bathroom in our house. And when you get to a hotel, there's just one. Yeah. And that changed things. <laughs> yeah, for sure. One shower, one tub, one toilet. That's exactly yeah. correct. One yeah. sink. Yeah. All of those things. So brushing teeth took six times um, the amount because we weren't used to having to take our turns mm-hmm. in the bathroom. So well, that was just one thing. And then like you said, if you have a swimming pool and you've got mixed genders in your family, you've got to think through people getting dressed and undressed with yes. one bathroom. Just be prepared for those sorts of things that you take for granted in your own home. And speaking of swimming pools, we had a little Walmart pool in our backyard for many years. And so our kids weren't used to swimming with other families a lot. Oh, yeah. And that was something that was new. So pool etiquette. (laughs) Um, Elevator etiquette. Well, just being in the hallway. When other people could be sleeping Mm -hmm. and thinking about that somebody could be sleeping at two o'clock in the afternoon and we need to respect them how we walk down the hallway. Yeah. For sure. I mean, I think when you're talking about having, having pizza, I can, many of our trips, um, like I said, we've been in the car, road trips and staying in a hotel along the way. And, you know, for a budget option, we would order in pizza or whatever. Right. We, like you said, I think it's in one of your blog posts. The first time we didn't have plates, we didn't have paper towels. I mean, and the hotel provides you with like four plastic cups and (laughs) nothing, (laughs) an ice bucket. So um, we have developed the practice of keeping paper plates, a roll of paper towels, wet wipes in a Mm -hmm. little bag. We just keep it in the back of the car for that very reason. Right. Those little things that you don't expect to come up. And we do have several blog posts that I've shared these little tips and we We will post all that in the show notes. So starting small is probably the first kind of big tip. Then we always would think about 
our family. Our mm-hmm. family is not your family. Right. So, but what might be a great trip for your kids mm-hmm. might not be so great for my kids. Right. So releasing that expectation that my vacation has to look like your mm-hmm. vacation is huge. Oh, that is so true. We've got to figure out personalities we have in the family, the ages yeah. of the kids yeah. in our family. You know, my second bit of advice is be flexible but don't stray too far from your normal schedule. Yeah. If your little ones require a nap in the afternoon, I would discourage doing a vacation where your kiddos aren't going to be able to get those naps in the afternoon. Absolutely. So know your kids. Yeah. You know, we were finally able to head out West to see my husband's family um, who lives in California. And so we planned um, a trip to the Grand Canyon. Yes. And the amount of walking that yes. that takes. Now, On the flip side, I have also taken my kids with family members to New York City. Mm -hmm. And because I grew up on the East Coast, I had an ease about being in the city with strollers and all that kind of thing. I would not. Right. So I think that's the other thing too. It's not just about the people. It's about me. What's my comfort level? So for some moms, taking their kids to the Grand Canyon would be panic inducing Mm -hmm. um, or going to the city would be panic inducing. Mm -hmm. Very good. Very good. No, you're exactly correct. It's thinking about each one of the personalities and how are you going to set up everybody to succeed? Yeah. And so I I asked my now 17 year old daughter about this topic and this kind of goes along with what you're saying. How do you make a vacation fun for everyone without catering to everyone's wants? That's a challenge. And it's especially a challenge when you have a lot of different ages, Mm -hmm. when you have a wide range from your oldest to your youngest. And thinking through, like, I've got one kid who's not a big fan of the beach. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just not his cup of tea. Mm -hmm. I mean, he still goes, but we along the way have figured out ways to make it more fun for him. We've allowed for certain things to happen while we're on vacation Mm -hmm. that are out of the norm, Mm -hmm. just so he doesn't feel like everybody else is on vacation, but him. Yeah. That's a really good point because it is, we all have our different likes. I mean, even my husband and I, we have different thoughts of what a vacation is. For me, a vacation is sitting, whether it's in front of the beach, in front of a stream and me reading Mm, like book after book (laughs) after book. That's a vacation for me. For him, that's an absolute nightmare. Yeah. And so we've had to learn to balance our vacations around his need for movement and exercise and action and my need to relax. Yes. That's a great point. Okay. So managing expectations, not just for your family, but for the individuals and compromise. Yeah. We've got to learn to do things we don't necessarily like to do because that's part of loving those in our family. Okay. Here's another one. Take pictures, but make memories. Okay. What does that mean? I actually had a conversation with my daughter a few weeks ago about always having to pose for pictures. And I'm not going to say I have the balance in this because when the kids were young, I did a lot of picture taking. Now that they've gotten older, Sometimes I will purposely not take a picture because I want to be part of the memory instead of making everybody pose for the memory. Okay. So making sure that you are engaged in the experience of the vacation, not just the documentarian for the vacation. That is a great way to say it. And not constantly having my kids have to pose for something in, in the way that they are You know, I I don't want my kids to look back on the pictures and go, mom kept telling me, smile for the camera, and them having to think all we did was just pose. Mm -hmm. We didn't do, we didn't experience, Mm -hmm. we didn't laugh, we didn't grow, we posed. Mm -hmm. That's a really good point. And I mean, our culture right now is you have to document every breath you take. So that's a great countercultural way to experience time as a family versus document your time as a family. And there's definitely a place for pictures. Don't get me wrong. When we lose the balance where all we're doing is posing, 
we are losing the experience. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you have to push pause on what you're doing to, to pose and get everybody. <laughs> and how many takes does it take exactly. to get the right picture, the best picture? Well, and if you've been part of our house, the posing portion can bring out some very negative sides in everybody. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There are <laughs> tears, tears to be had. Right. Um, and I think, too, I've learned this as I've gotten older. Get in the picture, mom. Oh. I mean, I have so many, especially when my kids were little, I was the picture taker. Right. So there's my husband and the kids. And I mean, the only reason you know that I was there was because I posted the picture. Mm -hmm. So get in there, mom. This is something that I've been battling here, um, going back to the lies we believe. But the idea that I don't want to be in the picture because I'm not happy with how I look oh. or my curly hair is frizzy that day right. or my outfit isn't flattering. What am I teaching my daughter? Yeah. yeah. When I go, no, I'm not picture worthy today. What am I saying about God? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great point. Then I asked my daughter what else were some things that she thought were worth mentioning in terms of vacations. And she said, involving them in the planning, you know, mm -hmm. at getting their input. You know, yeah. Hey kids, we're going to Yellowstone this year. Right. This is the way we're going to go. These are some of the th cool things we could see on the way. Yeah. Jenny, these sound interesting to you. Right. And then even for little kids, showing them the itinerary, give them a, mm -hmm. a map, a very simplified mm -hmm. version if you need to, but so involving them in the trip. Oh, that, that's really good advice. I think we, we get into this idea of they don't need to know, they won't understand understand, but so much learning can happen just by showing them on a map where they live and where you're going to go and different places you're going to stop. What other hot tips do you have for us? So one of the things that I continually come back to is this idea of this perfect vacation, the idea of kids sleeping in and, um, you know, sitting by the beach with a cold lemonade and your book and the kids are just going to quietly play in the, the water and, and you're just going to sit there and man, that has not been my experience. No, I will tell you now on this side of having teens and yeah. tweens, I had that experience right. one morning this year, <laughs> one morning, the rest, no, one morning. Um, yeah. But when my kids were little, absolutely not. A family vacation is not a break from parenting. That's a really good point. And I think we have this idea. I don't know if it's because of advertisements or the views that we see um, in commercials of these kids jumping around and playing and the parents just sitting there smiling. And vacations are work. They are a lot of work. And so we need to go in with that idea that this doesn't, this doesn't stop what we're doing on a daily basis. Yeah. yeah. I had a conversation with a sweet, sweet couple um, and they had taken their three young children. I think it was at the time five, two and like right at one. So, oh, wow. and they were complaining about the fact that it was not a vacation. They'd gone right. to the beach. They had the condo right on the water. They, they thought, right. you know, there's a pool, all the things. And I just, I mean, I had compassion, obviously, because I get it. Like we're tired right. and, you know, parenting and we think the word vacation means rest. Right. And I just very gently said, if that's the kind of vacation you're looking for, perhaps what you really wanted was a couple's vacation, right. not a family vacation. Yes. And I, that's what I hear you saying is mm -hmm. a family vacation is just what it says. It is for the entire family mm -hmm. and you don't get to stop being mom mm -hmm. because you're on vacation. Exactly. And that's actually a conversation my husband and I have had after vacations is that I come home more exhausted after a vacation than if we would have just stayed home home because a lot of times to save money and because of where we have gone, we will rent like a VRBO or an Airbnb. And so I'm cooking all the meals and trying to cook meals and try to gather the groceries so that you have just the right amount of food and not too many leftovers. And I mean, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's a lot of work and you get into bed by the end and you're exhausted. And we do a lot of national parks and camping. And so you add on top of that where we have just hiked for three, four, five miles, I'm spent by the time we get home. So this brings me then to the point is 
what is the goal of a family vacation? Mm. I think maybe that's the question we need to answer at this point. Because what we're saying is it's certainly not necessarily, it can be, there are lots of great resorts and stuff that offer, you know, and cruises that have child activities where you can kind of, you know, take a break. But for the most part, when we talk about a family vacation, it's usually all the family together all the time. Right. So what would you say then is the goal of a family vacation if it's not for a rest for mom and dad? That is such a great question. As you're saying that, I'm thinking, this is what a family vacation would be for me, but I'm realizing I think your answer would be different than mine. And it goes back to what we said at the beginning of this podcast is when you set out to plan a vacation, if you are planning with somebody else's family in mind, it's going to be a disaster. Hmm. We're not talking about the picture perfect vacation. We're just talking about a realistic family vacation, take into account your people talk to your husband. I'm going to say you may not have had this conversation ever. Have asked him, what's your idea of a family vacation? And I would personally say that's a great place to start. Before you ever look at a map and decide where, start with what are our goals for family vacations? For us, it's the experiences. Being able to experience, to see different places, to see different cultures, to see different creations by God that are different than what our normal is. But my husband and I had to come to terms, had to come to an agreement of what is that going to look like for our family and let that goal, that dream progress as the kids got older. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's flexible again, like we said at the top of the podcast, I mean, be flexible, hold those things loosely, but be honest, (laughs) be honest Mm -hmm. about where your kids are, what age they are. And those are things that I talk about, um, on some of the blog posts that I've shared our family vacations. So I share this might not be a good situation if you are X, Y, or Z. So I encourage you and we'll put those in the show notes. Okay, Melanie, to end, I want to say something that could kind of shock people. Okay. I want to give people permission not to go on vacation. Okay. What, why? (laughs) I want to give you permission not to go on vacation Because it's this expectation that this is what families do. There's something freeing in hearing that. Well, I think we look at social media and we see all of these, what I consider big trips. And it's the thought, you know, those lies that we believe (laughs) that Satan comes in and says, well, their family's doing it. You need to do it too. Good families go to Disney World. Good families go to the Grand Canyon. Right. You're destroying your kid's childhood if you don't fill in the blank. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. And what I'm saying in this permission is it's okay to not do anything big. We did not do any big vacations until our kids were older. And then we did. And it's been a good experience. There have also been... Oh, some failures in the middle of our yeah. vacations. Yeah, I was say, I mean, we, we were a tent camping family. We hiked and tent camped. Mm-hmm. And the a number of stories that have come out, like the family oh, goodness, lore yes. that has developed out of those trips, that's priceless to me. Right. It cost, what, 20 bucks to pinch our tent for the weekend. Mm-hmm. But man alive, we have some fantastic memories. Those things that you talk about over the Thanksgiving and yes. Christmas yes. dinner table for years. Yes. Generations. Yes. Yeah. yeah. We'll talk about those stories. Well, this has been a fun podcast and mm-hmm. um, just getting to talk about family vacations. And I just appreciate you giving us the freedom to not take vacations. Mm-hmm. I, I think that my younger mama self would have really appreciated that. Mm-hmm. So thank you. Mm-hmm. Okay. So just to recap, some of the things that we talked about were considering your specific family yeah. and the people who are in your family as you talk about vacations and plan for vacations. Um, we did throw out a few kind of um, practical tips. But please do check out the Parenting to Impress blog. There are some fantastic blog posts that Heidi had already posted just with great tips for planning vacations and those really kind of nitty gritty details that we easily overlook. Also, there are some fantastic vacation resources, some car activities, a road trip activity book, a travel journal that are available. So check those out on the ABC Jesus Loves Me website. And as always, we just encourage you to keep God the center of 
any of the plans that you're preparing for your family. Be prayerful about vacation. I know that sounds strange. A lot of us don't include God in our vacation planning, but He would love to guide and direct all of your steps, including those fun experiences. Until next time. Thank you for listening to the Parenting to Impress podcast. We invite you to visit the abcjesuslovesme.com and parentingtoimpress.com website, as well as join the Parenting to Impress private Facebook group. Check out the show notes for more information about topics shared in the episode. Please subscribe, leave a review, and share this episode with your friends.